So this is why your artwork can be blurry on Procreate. Uh, so the first thing, my canvas that I always use is 3000 by 3000 pixels at 300 DPI and it works really, really great for me. I even do uh, professional client work uh, with this size. So Procreate is a raster program, as you probably already know. So it's different than like a vector program. One of the things that a lot of people probably do is open up a canvas you take your um, your Apple Pencil and then you start drawing. You want to draw a face or something. So then you draw it and you have your face there. So the problem when you do this is that you're actually using a very tiny bit of the canvas. So this negates the fact that you have a huge canvas. Because let's say you wanted to get rid of the background at some point in time and just export this what you just draw what you what you've just drawn is going to be pixelated when you see it on a different screen because you're probably going to be seeing it like this and also at this point in time you can't make it bigger because if you make it bigger it's going to look bad because you can't scale up so you just have to be aware of how big you're drawing when you're drawing something in the first place now, the way to remedy this is just make sure you're aware of your canvas. Take a bigger brush. Uh, let's see, I'll use the same brush. You can make your brush bigger. And then draw your face. So then it's nice and clear. You can get up close and you can draw your face. Or right, it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be blurry. So there's a big difference between this, the lines here, and the lines here. So that's one thing. Make sure you use up all of the canvas. Uh, just just be aware of what you're going to draw uh, and how big you need it to be. And just make sure you use all of that canvas because otherwise a big canvas is not going to make a difference if what you're drawing is really small. Another thing are the brushes. So there's tons of different kinds of brushes here. Uh, let's see. Oops. Let me make a new layer here. So we have that brush. We have Procreate Pencil. And then we have, let's see, my brush, Inkin. And then we have, let's see, I'll use soft brush. Soft brush, and there's tons of other brushes. We'll use another, use a different brush. So there's tons of different kinds of brushes, and when you're looking at them just at a normal size of your, of your canvas on your screen, uh, they look fine. They look how they're intended to look. But if you zoom in, especially if you zoom in this far, then you're going to see all of these all of these differences let me make sure my exposure is locked so you're going to see all of these artifacts you're going to see all the pixelation you can see the pixelation here in the soft brush you can see the edges here so you can see all of these things that look bad but this is actually just art if you were to take if you were to draw on a regular piece of paper uh, just like people have been doing forever uh, if you were to look at a, if you were to take a macro lens and look at it under the macro lens or a microscope, it's not going to be clean. It's not going to look like a vector artwork. It's going to look messy like this because this is just naturally how it looks. Now, the benefit of this is uh, you can't, you can't have all these brushes with these type of textures in a vector program. Um, you can get it very clean, obviously, and you can scale and you don't have to worry about uh, things being pixelated and things like that, but you can't create the same type of artwork with a vector program. So even though that sounds great, that oh, it'll it'll never be pixelated. It's completely different. It's a completely different type of artwork. Um, the reason why, you know, we can do things like this and do uh, paintings and things on a raster program like Procreate is because of the way that the way that the pixels are, the way that it handles the gradient and things like that. 
Um, so they're just, they're not one-to-one. -one. There are certain things that you can do in the other program. There are certain things you can make in Procreate and then completely copy to a T in a vector program. Uh, yes, but there are, there's a lot of things that you can do in Procreate that are impossible to do with a vector program. Uh, it just doesn't work the same. It's not going to look the same. And, you know, that's just the nature of it. So you just have to be aware of what you're creating, why you're creating it, and what the differences are. Um, let's see. Let me just clear this. So uh, just to recap, and just so I remember myself what I've been talking about, first of all, it's using a small portion of the canvas and then blowing it up. That will always make your work blurry. Then also choosing the right brush. So I showed you the brushes before. Um, just know that like brushes like Procreate, pencil, sketch brushes, things like that, uh, they're going to have this look and it's by design. It's by design that it looks like this because it looks more like how a pencil looks. This is how a pencil, how the lead goes on the paper. That's just how it works. So there's brushes like uh, my brush, Inkin, which is uh, similar to uh, a stock brush. I made it from a stock brush. But when I zoom in, it looks pixelated like this, but it looks very crisp and clear just in a normal, a normal size. So uh, 3,000 by 3,000 pixels equals 10 inches by 10 inches if it was physically printed. So that's probably what about here, maybe, you know, obviously a little bit bigger. But this is how big it would be. So it's not like it, I'm not going to print it out where you're seeing the pixels because that just doesn't, doesn't make sense. I'm not pr printing anything that big. Uh, another thing that uh, people complain a lot about is rotating. So we have our our face here and what happens if if you continue to rotate or resize it will lose quality and again that's just the nature of a raster program. So basically what I do to combat that is just take whatever it is and duplicate it. So I'll get rid of the one on the bottom. So now we have two of these. So let's say you're working on something and you need this to be in a different spot. So you make it smaller like that, but then you realize you want to do some, you know, some some touch-ups. You know, you have to resize it. And you just have to find the right spot for it. You move it around, you rotate it. Uh, you just want to you just want to get to a place where it's perfect. And sometimes that does involve a lot of resizing and rotating. But you figure out the the perfect spot is here, right at the top of the page. So it actually doesn't look too bad, but one thing that I do if I if I make a lot of um, a lot of changes to something, I just go back to the original, duplicate it. Okay, so now I have the original here. So I can take the original and I can just adjust it, and I can bring it up to where the new one is, where the old one that we were moving around a lot. So, and I'll just get rid of the one that we did all of the, all of the um, changes to. But anyway, uh, I've only adjusted it once. So I took it from the big size and I only adjusted it once. So just be conscious of things like that. Anytime I have to rotate or resize things, um, I just make a copy and then once I have it in the right spot, then I can just move the original, the, the original one, make, you know, make another copy of the original one and just move that. So you're not constantly uh, rotating and moving and resizing the same one. Because the second you do that, and then you want to make it bigger again, it's not going to look good. It's going to look terrible. So just don't do that. Just keep an extra one. You know, you can, you can lock it. Uh, just keep an extra one at full size. That way, you can always work from that that backup, and you and you won't you won't have to worry about uh, that again. Okay, so the only other thing that could possibly make your work uh, blurry is if you do a lot of, you know, like if you do a lot of drawings. Like let let's say you wanna. Uh, 
I don't know, do something like this. And then you wind up like, you wind up changing it or you wind up, you know, so sometimes, sometimes if you, if you, if you're using a different opacity, then it can sort of get a little, get a little wonky. So all you do is just take a brush that you know is, is crisp. And by crisp, I mean like a brush like this that has very, um, it doesn't have a lot of these, you know, it's very close to the original, like, thickness. Whereas, and this is so hard to explain, like a soft brush, a soft brush looks like this. And see how many more squares there are? So that's a little bit more blurry, which is going to make it a little more smooth. But if you want to have that really crisp look, you just take a brush that doesn't really have that. Take a brush that's more crisp. Where was my... I must have accidentally deleted... Was it here? Oh, well, anyway. So... And you take your brush, and you can go like that. You can also use the eraser and just take take a, a brush that's really has a sharp edge, like this. And then you can go around whatever it is that you need. Sometimes, like I've done that before, sometimes I, I work on something, and then I have to go back and just sharpen it up by using the eraser, and I'll use Butterblade or Inkin. And I'll just I'll just kind of sharpen it up, whatever it is. Uh, and again, when you zoom in, it's gonna look pixelated, but that's just because it's zoomed in a thousand percent. It's not actually it doesn't really affect it if you're seeing it uh, any normal length. Now, um, again, I mean there are certain. I mean, if you upload something to Facebook or to an app, uh, there is gonna be a little bit of quality loss, but Personally, I never I don't have any issues uploading with Instagram or Facebook. Facebook does have an option where you can upload and upload in HD. Uh, you'll lose a little bit of quality, but I've uploaded things to Facebook and they look uh, perfect. So usually, anything on your screen is going to look how it's how it will on Facebook or on Instagram, um, unless you're using an older screen. Screen sometimes shows show things differently, and that's also just the nature of all the different screens that we see artwork on. But I upload things all the all the time to Facebook and Instagram and they look fine because I I I use all these same things so the artwork is nice and clear. Um you know, if this was this big and then I upload it to Instagram and then I crop it in Instagram or in Facebook, it's going to crop it to here. So even though it still looks okay, it starts to get a little Excuse me, I'm getting too amped up. Uh, it starts to get a little a little wonky uh, once you crop it. So, you know, and that's the only way. I believe that doesn't really change the. If you if you do make something small and you realize you haven't like made a backup, then just go back to the bigger one. Uh, don't. You know, there's going back is the only way to kind of not have it lose quality. And have it go bigger again so if you accidentally make something smaller and you realize you don't have a backup just go back just do undo that step and it and i i don't believe that it resizes it again it just brings everything back to a previous state i'm doing a lot of talking i think i should probably end this um i don't think there was anything else that i wanted to say uh those that was the main that was the main thing but I feel like I want to show you I feel like I need to show you like an example okay so like this cat you know you know I made it this size and you see how big I made it because I want it to be clear if it's going to be printed now we can zoom all the way in and everything is going to be pixelated that's just the nature of the art that that is what it is but you zoom out to anything which is a normal size and it comes together to be, you know, to be cohesive and to be pretty clear, I think. I mean, I don't think you're really seeing any pixelation or things like that. So again, just just don't, just remember that, that just because the iPad can do it, 
this is abnormal. This is like a, this is zoomed in to the point where you would, would never look at regular artwork or a regular painting this much. Because if you could, it would look the same way. So a lot of times, you know, it, it will come down to user error. You know you I mean? Like just, it's just something you have to just be aware of and just learn how to create things bigger, learn how to not resize and rotate things too much. Uh, that's all part of it, but it will definitely improve once you just do the things that I've told you because that's what I do and I don't have the blurry and, and pixelation issues. So I promise you, if you do that, just try to do that, just work on that and your artwork will be a million times better and you won't have to be worried about um, Procreate or using vectors or things like that. Uh, they have their applications. Their other apps have their applications where they work. But Procreate is amazing and you, it's, it's not because of Procreate that your work is blurry. It's because of your workflow and things that you're doing in Procreate that are making it blurry. So improve on that and your artwork will improve 100%. All right. So as always, keep drawing, and I will catch you guys in the next video.